I'm not really a big fan of personal protection dogs um, because there's very few amount of dogs who can do what your dog does and then also turn around and be able to bite someone time too. So I think that what you have is perfectly fine. You just need a dog who's big. When if people that, walk in, he barks, and you get the job done. And dude, by the way, like if somebody came in, I began to struggle with them. I promise you, my fuckers get involved. Yeah, exactly. Like, like he's gonna tear that motherfucker up. And how much does that cost you to train him for that? Nothing. Exactly. So like he shits on the rug like every month. I don't know why he does it. But the problem is that you have a lot of why people does he do who that? go. Why does he shit on the rug every month? <laughs> no, what the fuck is with this guy? Hey guys, if you missed out on the last conference in Nashville, Tennessee, you don't want to miss out on the next one. It's April 28th through May 3rd, Orlando, Florida, the Gaylord Palms Resort and Convention Center. You made a mistake missing the last one. You don't want that to happen again on this one. Five days of some of the best training you're ever going to experience packed into one event. We have an early bird special right now, $50 off. Use 24 early bird on our website, streetcop.com. Look for the conference. Click the link. Register today. If you want to get significantly better at this profession in five days, don't dare miss out on the 2024 Street Cop Conference. Be a street cop. Sherrod Johnson. <laughs> Tell us about you, dude. Who are you? What do you do? <laughs> so I uh 28, I started a dog training business, Hella Canines, four years ago. Um I was active duty at the time. I've been in the Navy for 10 years, just got out in February, and I kind of just fell in love with dogs. My first deployment is in Iraq in 2016. I saw my first Malawan. I was like, yeah, like that's that's pretty cool. So when I got out to, I got back to San Diego, I found a mentor in Schutzen and I kind of just got into dogs just straight from there from in the sport world and dabbled into the rescue world a little bit. And then I kind of got to a spot where one rescue, the rescue world is horrendous. I mean, it's really tough to deal with. And especially when you're like an E5 in the Navy, <laughs> like it gets really expensive just trying to save dogs. So, um, as I was doing the sport dog thing, I found other people, you know, I, I just got, I kind of like blew up on social media for a little bit where a lot of people were just wanting to come to me for advice with working with like their Malinois and stuff like that. And I used that. I started my dog training business. And I mean, here we are now. I mean, did you always like dogs? You have dogs as a kid? I actually didn't. Isn't Weird. that crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's crazy. Um, and I actually think about that when it comes to my kids too, because I'm like, they're always surrounded by animals. Like we have like so many animals. We have snakes, turkeys. I mean, like we got it's it cool. all. So I'm like, kids he's not going to like it. But in Georgia, like dogs aren't like, uh, they're not the same. Like in Georgia, like a lot Too of dogs hot. were, it's just like they're tied up outside. You just give them scraps. Like that's what a dog is usually in the South. So like to see like someone's dog inside the house, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> like, like it was very strange. Wow. Um, and then I got to San Diego and it was like pretty normal. And even still, I didn't really care so much about them. And then I realized that they could do stuff. And I'm like, wow, like dogs are actually a lot smarter than I thought they were. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of just fell in love with it from there. I went down the social media train and like seeing all the other trainers do all this cool stuff. and. I just wanted to get into it. I, th I found it so interesting. Like, just like, it was, it's just, I can't even explain it. Like, I, once I found it, I like didn't want to be in the military anymore. I just wanted to train dogs. I thought about doing the canine route for a little bit, but in the military, it's, it's really hard to stop. Especially when like, in my, I was a comms guy. So in my, rep, like in that kind of like community, like they don't want to lose comms guys because it's really, I mean, people come in, they get their certs and they're out. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, I did. I did the 10 years and I just got out in February and I mean, it's been great ever since we got multiple locations, um, lots of, lots of really good trainers. We do a lot of sports stuff. So I, you know, I'm a little so biased here. Stuff, like, like elaborate on that. So like, uh, protection sports. So, I mean, you, you know, shits in French ring, Belgian ring, uh, what the fuck is that? MPV. What like, you, listen, we don't know your acronyms. <laughs> We're civilians. All we right. So the, I actually, people, like, the right. motherfuckers will write to me and be like, hey, uh, you know, like, I'm on a CQVJ in, in California. Like, what? I'm like, bro, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> no idea. Like, hey, bro, we just dealt with a 1073 last night. And I'm like, where does that? What's a 1073? <laughs> no, I right? get that. So, like, uh, let's talk about dogs for a second. So, um, I can just tell you the acronyms, but a lot of them are like foreign. So, I, I'm, I've, have you heard of Schutzen before? No. You, n never before. No. Okay. So, Schutzen's like the old, like, German, like, dog sport right it's probably like what one of the biggest in the world so what they do is they do obedience tracking and protection so it used okay. to be like a breed like a breed you survey said it's a sport like as you guys compete in this yeah okay so it used to be like a breed survey like well it still kind of is a brief survey but it's become more sport like it used to be like okay like you know how do we know that these dogs are going to be police dogs in Germany, right and they're like okay well we'll put them through this temperament test this obedience test and then like, we'll have them do protection we'll do some tracking right and it's very like the tracking's not super like crazy. It's, it's all like nose to ground stuff. 
but it's supposed to give them a good baseline and be like, okay, we can breed this dog to, you know, produce more police dogs kind of. And then so like every country has, well, I'm not going to say every country, but like a lot of other countries kind of like jumped in on this as well. And they have their own. So like you have French ring, right? So they created like for their things wasn't German shepherds, it was Malinois. And so they, they got these Malinois. I'm like, okay, like what's our test to like say this, this dog is like good to go. You know what I mean? And so they wanted to be able to kind of like prove these dogs. And that just became so popular with like the public in general that everyone jumps onto these things like sports and competes with. Um, so for me, I think it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool because when you talk about sport dogs, I mean like their athleticism and like this is a standard that they're training for is completely different. So we have one here. I mean, there's a multiple like small dog sports that pop up, but the biggest one here and probably the biggest suit sport in the world right now is PSA. Um, so that was okay. founded by Jerry Bradshaw and uh, at Tar Heel Canine in North Carolina. So it? it's Protection Sports Association. So it's kind of the same pre premise. It's protection and obedience, but this one is just a lot like it's American. Like a lot of the times, like in higher levels, you're seeing these guys use like chainsaws and throwing buckets of waters at dogs, like a lot of gunshots, like testing the dog, uh. man. Got to test the dog. And I think it's actually really cool. It's probably the most like in line, I think, when it comes to, like police dog training. Like there's a, I'm not too familiar with the guy, but uh, Mike, uh, Mike McMahon, I think his name is, just got a PSA 3 and he was a, he was a canine handler at the same time. So, I mean, like you're talking about a police dog going through and, and accomplishing a PSA 3, which is actually really big because it's like the, it's like the highest level for PSA. Mm -hmm. And there's like less than 40 of them. Oh, wow. Like it's huge. You know what I mean? So like you, you get your dog to this point, it's like, well done. Like you, no one can say anything to you at this point. So, but by the time the dogs get there, I mean, they're old and you know what I mean? So at that point, like, oh, I'm retired. I'm done. You know? And there's, yeah, so there's like a puppy. whole like subculture of this dog thing. I hate to say, I feel like I'm sounding like, um, the guy who died, the, uh, Larry, uh, his name, he did the talk show on CNN for like a hundred years. The guy with the, the, guy, the, the glasses, King? right? Larry King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm sounding like Larry King. So these dogs, uh, you know, um, <laughs> Well, well, dude, I, I think the conversation today, I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, um, I, I guess we're correlating back into more of, it's fucking cool to know what you, what you have going on. How's it correlating to the police world? And, and secondly, we often talk about business in this podcast, so I wonder if we're going there a little bit as well. I would we love never, to. We, we didn't actually... <laughs> Uh, we never preface this at all. There's never <laughs> like, dude. Like Frank is like, did you um, did you look at his stuff before he came here? I'm like, yeah. I, I like it. I like it. When people when I, who started working here? I think it was Karen. She's like, you don't do any research before you have guests on. I'm like, no. Nah. I think that's cool though because like it's like your first time meeting someone. You know, it's, you, I'm you saying, have dude, more stuff to actually talk about. That's why I like like when people are like, we're we ready to go. I'm like, no, nah, we're we're already going, dude. Like it's just like you know, <laughs> it's like too late. Yeah, where it's, it's been. Sometimes I have to do the the introductions at the end. People don't know that. But it's the truth. <laughs> um, well, so now you got into this business. How are you working with police agencies? So, I mean, a lot of the times uh, we get like a young handler or something like that that sees our stuff on social media because we're pretty, we're pretty big on social media to where people stumble across our stuff. What's your handle um, on social media? Hella canines. Okay, yeah. just straight up. Where'd um, hella come from? So we're in San Diego and uh, when me and my wife kind of like got to kind of help me start off with the whole business thing. And uh, when we first, it's actually, a whole, it's a whole like deep story, but I'm just going to, I'm going to sum yeah, it up for you. Yeah, still keep it surface level. Hey, I'm going <laughs> to sum it up for you. Uh, when I met her, she had already had three dogs and I had three dogs. And when she God moved damn. in, we had six. Yeah, we almost like sorry. not were going to date like because we were like, we can't move in with six dogs. Like, this insane. is it's in San Diego. All, all Belgian Malmars? So like German Shepherds and Malinois. Yeah. Wow, wow, <laughs> we had like dude. one Husky. It was like like 10 years old at the time. Oh, uh, was he just like, what the fuck? Yeah. He just put me down already. <laughs> yeah, he was spicy too. You know, he can get down. But um, yeah, so like we had a lot of dogs. Everyone knew us as like people who had a lot of dogs were in San Diego. And I was like, hey, let's Why would let's somebody need that many dogs? You don't. You, you, I don't <laughs> recommend it for anyone. Um, I have a dog and I hate to say this, but I'm like, I love my dog. He's a good boy. Mm -hmm. I do love him. He's the last dog I'll ever own. <laughs> I'm never having another dog in my life just because it doesn't align for the way that I live my life. Yeah. I'm not a homebody. I'm not somebody who goes jogs in the morning. I don't take him fucking to the beach and throw a frisbee and shit. Yeah. Like this dude exists because he exists in my house. Uh, essentially he was, I compare it to like, uh, I mean, if you think about literally anything else, like if someone's like really into tech, right. They have lots of, you know, and I hate to compare it like that because you're talking true. about a living yeah, thing, yeah, but yeah. like when you have a dog, like you understand and you figure out that dog and you train that dog and you're like, but then like you got one dog. And so like a lot of trainers, I think find themselves in the situation where like, they work that dog and that's like, man, I want to train again. Or like, Hey, I want to work on this now. Or Hey, and then they see, Oh, this breed is good for this, you know? So like 
for me, like I'm awful about it because I'm just interesting in training. Like that, that's the biggest thing for me. It's just like, how do I get this dog to do these things? So like, it's not just like, oh, I, I like seeing dogs bite people. I like, you know, smell and odor. Like I like cattle dogs. Like I would love to have an Australian cattle dog or like a border collie and do like some herding and stuff like that. Yeah, like cool. I think that's so cool. How do they teach them how to do that? Oh man, I can't even, I'm not even the person to talk to about that. Yeah, because I'm it's curious lot, when I see those man. videos, it's pretty it's, wild. A lot of it's natural. Believe it or is not, it, it's, a, it's a natural behavior. I mean, I if you think go, that if your dog, I, I would think at some point you gotta bring a second dog in to watch the first dog. And that's probably yeah. the best way to train them. So I, they do like, they set up like these whole rings and they teach, like the dog already wants to chase it. Right. Okay. So like if you, if any, like I'm sure there's people at home right now who have like little cattle dogs because they got it as a pet because it's super cute and it's like chasing the kids around and it'll be in like a shelter tomorrow. But like that's usually like they Shit. already want to do it. So you put them in like a ring and all you just kind of like start to like um, you just mark the behaviors of them going left and right. So those like come by me or, you know, like they use specific words to show the dog this left and right motion. Oh, clockwise. And so they do that at a very young age. And I mean, it's it's amazing, honestly. And yes. I haven't gotten into it. Honestly, I want to do it. I really want to do it. But that's so that's how I ended up having so many dogs is because. I was just super inch. I don't know why my wife ended up so many. I wanted my kids. I, 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 the reason we got a dog was I wanted my kids to. I could see at young ages they were getting very, very concerned when a dog was around. They weren't comfortable mm. with dogs. So I wanted that. Um, I wanted a dog that would be protective. Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually looking at going with something that you could command, but I was obviously being put. Uh, there was uh, some, uh, you know. Consensus didn't line up, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was getting a little, a little pushback from the fuck command staff. So, uh, you know, I, I, they weren't signing off. Yeah, you know, I think uh, that's interesting. So, you saying that you got a dog because your kids were a little bit nervous around them? Yeah, I wanted my kids to be comfortable around dogs. I didn't want them to fear dogs their whole life. That's actually, I've never heard anyone say that before. And it's yeah. actually, it's, it's interesting because it's like I have the same thing, but it happened with like something completely different, like uh, with snakes. I'm, I was terrified of snakes like most of my life. And I didn't want to be like that dad. Like once you become like the man of the house, you know what I mean? I don't want to be that dad who ever got in the situation where like, like a there's bitch. a snake in yeah, front of my kid and he's like freaking out. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what would you do? Right. So uh, I did something very similar. I went and got a snake so I could take care of it um, and kind of overcome my fear of reptiles. Now, obviously, this is like a domestic, like uh, as domestic as a reptile can be like snake. But I've, I'm a lot more comfortable with him now. So I think that's funny that like you said that with, with like in dogs in general because I've actually I've never heard anyone say that with kids usually they just see dogs and they just like love them for some reason I guess it was puppies you see like a big German Shepherd it might change well, my dog's big playing field. Like a, so he's a Rhodesian Ridgeback yeah a massive dog yeah, he's big he's like 108 pounds did you get him as a puppy yeah 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 oh, he's, he's, a, he's champion that's awesome it's a crazy story how I got him but he like the guy I bought him from was like yo can people actually couldn't believe that I actually got a dog from this guy we got this dog. I did a lot of research on breeds, and he was the appropriate dog for our family. It's so a really good dog. You looked up like what was going to be the best dog for like what did you look up like? <laughs> I wanted to know what dogs. Well, first of all, I wanted to get him as a puppy because I had very little children, and I wanted him to be getting used to kids sticking their hands in his mouth mm. and ears, and you know, uh, their mother was like, "I think we should adopt a dog." I'm like, "I'm not fucking a, not with little kids." You got adults, you got teenagers, we'll adopt a dog. But like, these kids are too little. You don't know what this dog's been through. We don't know any history on it. And I'm not trying to sound like a dick. Uh, you may have got a great dog in the world, but I'm also not getting a kid's face torn off. You know, Jeff Smith used to work here. He, they adopted a dog. The dog tore his son's face to shreds. No, I, I believe they, it. And they had to get the dog put down. No, and it's good that you did that because a lot of people do just end up rescuing dogs. And it's, it's like a big thing, right? It's like the adopt, don't chop kind of mm -hmm. thing. But then you bring your dog to me as a trainer and you, you got your dog for 30 bucks and now you're spending $4,000 to fix, fix an issue. <laughs> so, well, well, so you and it's see, tearing your family apart, honestly. Yeah, so. dude. He's a champion, you know, he's champion dog, champion bloodline. You know, he's a little, he's a little or he has waffled my kids on several occasions. He doesn't mean it. <laughs> Um, and you know, and he plays, I don't know. He's very interesting dog. He likes to be chased and he likes to come back and like snap at you to chase him. He's very, have you met, you met my dog, right? He, he, if you start playing with him, he's very intimidating. And I try to tell people like, he's fine, but he's also a very intimidating dog. So reasons I wanted him. One, I needed a puppy. Uh, two, I like the breed because I wanted this. I, I like big dogs. I don't like small dogs. Um, Ridgebacks have a really good history as a family dog, but also a very good history of being very protective when the situation, they can like discern good guy from bad guy. So they know they are very brave dogs. You know, you hear that you read these stories like, ever see the testimony? I forgot, I think, I forgot what 
I think it might have been the um, one of these serial killers telling the stories like, yeah, people's dogs literally just watched my, their golden retrievers and like their labs like literally sat there and watched while I murdered them. Yeah, they won't. They That's wouldn't get so involved. bad. There's a woman right, where I live. Her house got burglarized and the dogs ran into the bathroom and hit. I see. Yeah, I think wasn't there a video on that or I mean it I happened know, but, so she often it could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like these dogs <laughs> were so scared they went into the bathroom like hid in the tub. It's natural though. I mean, a lot of dogs. I mean, like you say, you you got the rid back to be like protective and. For the most part, I'll say that like most dogs just naturally don't know what to do. They didn't know, you know what I mean? They get in that situation. But now in your dog's situation, like this is a different person. They may not necessarily go and bite the guy. No, but, but stand his ground and bark. Bro, that, that's you a deterrence. Dude. Like bro, you're not like bro, people. Not that dog will make you shit your pants yeah. when you come to the house and everybody shits their pants. I'm yeah. Like he's fine. Once I give him <laughs> the okay, know. like I'll if you're like so we have you know, a big property. So I have people working on my property a lot because I have a lot of landscaping, yeah. dude. So when they come in the backyard, I'm like, come on, let's go. We'll go. I got to bring him out to meet them. Yeah. No, I think that's really cool. I think that like speaks to like, you know, what I was talking about with the California canine reforms. Like just having a dog just demands like, you know, oh, what you know canine compliance. handlers will say they avoid actual use of force situations when the dog barks. Do these politicians, these chiefs of police understand that merely the dog barking oh, yeah. fixes situations and gets people to submit yeah, at the you threat change of the your dog? change mind immediately. Oh, bro. Yeah. Who I mean, who wouldn't? Like, I do it for a living. Like, I get in a suit and I get bit by dogs. And, like, sometimes even with pet dogs and, like, aggressive dogs. And even still, I'm like, yeah, no. No, thank you. <laughs> like, <laughs> how bad have you been bit? Uh, I got a really bad one uh, on my leg. And it was, like, early on and when I was still learning how to read dogs in the rescue oh, world. I went to this lady's house. That's a tough house. lesson, huh? Yeah, I learned it once and that was it. I, it's, it's ingrained. I will never forget. I will never forget the dog's name. His name was Patrick. Went to this lady's house. She's like, I, uh the her boss just dumped this dog on her. so she's like hey like, i got this dog i can't keep him anymore like you should take him right and i guess there was like some weird like quid pro quo thing going on at work so she took this mountain law into her home where she has like two little girls Oof. and so she calls us and she's like i don't know what to do with this dog but like he's trying to kill my daughters like i just Holy have him kenneled shit. in my garage like i guess wow. she the dog bit like one of the girls like little like friends or something like that Whoa. so i go there and i'm like at this point in my career i was still thinking that a lot of aggression from dogs was all fear i mean it's still it's fear based it's fear of losing something but in general like a lot of dogs were just like afraid and that's why they were doing that. So that's what that was my mind at this time, like four years ago. I'm like, yeah, sure, like I'll, I'll go take a watch a few episodes of Caesar Milan. Yeah. You and think you're like, fucking? I'll get in there and, and everything yeah, yeah, will yeah. be done. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I pull up and uh, I see the dog. Dog's barking at me. All right, let's go for a walk. She pulls the dog out and uh, she's walking him. And I and the first thing I notice, which kind of threw me, it threw me off. You like you see something, you're like, hmm, that's strange. The dog took like literally took a shit in front of me. Now, one thing a dog doesn't do when they're afraid is just like sit there and like turn their back to you, like gets comfy in the grass and just like take a shit and i'm like what like that's that was strange like, so i kept it in my mind we kept walking and uh, as she goes to turn around i'm coming up on the side of her and he just like no growl no bark just reaches out grabs me in the Whoa. Like, like just just grabs me and i like slapped him in the nose. i was like hey <laughs> i slapped him in the nose and he comes off and i'm just looking at my leg i'm in joggers like <laughs> and it's just like all leaking and i'm just, like, trying to maintain my cool i'm like no it's okay <laughs> like it happens <laughs> you know what i mean and so I actually couldn't do much for the dog because, like I said, I was active duty. I was on a ship at the time. So I had um, my first command was spec war. But in between my spec war time, I was on a ship for like, like three years. And so like a lot of days I was gone. So I didn't want to take this dog into my house. Like my wife was going to have to let this dog out to potty and feed it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah this isn't going to happen. So this was like a whole what different do you do level with a dog that like that. It's a slow process. <laughs> it's I mean, actually, there's a lot of different ways. Um. Some people just, you know, they go high and right with it and just like demand respect from the dog. Um, what happens is like they kind of like shut the dog down to realize like, oh, like this doesn't work. Because sometimes like even though a lot of the aggression is genetic, um, dogs start to learn like what works. Like your Rhodesian Ridgeback, right? The first time someone had ever came up that he was unsure about, he probably like growled or kind of like barked at them. And they did what? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, oh, OK, now I know what I can do and I can kind of control the environment around me. And so either one of two things, that dog learned it in, in the environment and he realized he can bully people around and, and, and that escalates to actually biting and like he's loving it. It's being reinforced left and right. 
someone sees this lady with this 80 pound melon walking down the street and he's barking. Everyone crosses the street, right? He's like, yeah, I got them, right? And so you have to now counter condition that and actually show the dog that it doesn't work anymore. And it's hard. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like imagine like you, you understand gravity. Yeah. If I hold this cup, I drop it and it goes down. Just imagine trying to convince someone it doesn't do, that doesn't work anymore. Right, right, You're right. Like, Wait, what? So like for the dog, that's how they see it. So like um, some trainers will do the extreme and like they'll get in a bite suit and they'll let the dog just like tag them and they'll just look at the dog like, what are you doing? Sit. You know, and the dog's like, wait, what? Could you imagine that? Like being the guy who like gets into a ring and always wins a fight and then you punch with one dude and he's like, wait, we started already? <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's one way that some people do it. And, that, and even still, I don't, I don't necessarily recommend that way. I think that regardless, there has to be some kind of level of respect that has to be built. It has to be like a relationship. Mm -hmm. And is that a dog that you can begin to familiarize with other people or is that dog so you'd be surprised that dog is familiarized with other people now yeah um i wasn't able to take do really much with him but i had a friend who could and he had the time i mean he was on a, operating a way bigger scale than i was i was just a rescue at this time and uh he came and i mean within like i think a month that dog went into a home and it was being handled by oh, no, no shit. so do the dogs ever revert but back to old behavior I think they do if you're talking about like a short time span. Like there's uh, two different ways when it comes to like training a dog. You can train the dog in a way to where it actually changes their mindset about things, right? So if you have a scared dog, you can make the dog not be scared and understand that people are fine through using obedience. But then sometimes what often happens is dogs are just being conditioned to do something for a little bit. And then maybe the dog goes back to the owner or the dog switches handlers and a canine and then like the dog goes back to the same thing. They do. So it just depends. Um, you see it pretty often, like, uh, especially in the military working dog world where, like, a dog was, like, perfectly fine with his handler, and then he goes to the next handler, and he's, like, not outing. And, like, well, he outed with me, you know what I mean? Um, and it's just because the methods of training change. They never actually fix the court issue. They kind of just, like, you know, you know I, I hate to say it, but, like, a yank and crank method of, like, hey, you got to do this because you're going to get in trouble if you don't. And maybe that previous handler, it worked with him, and he commanded respect, but the new handler coming straight out of boot camp, it doesn't work anymore. So... If the original handler would have actually just changed the way the dog thought about it and was like, hey, dude, like, you know, let go of this. This is, this is actually what's, you know, this is, this benefits both of us. We can move on. And then the dog's like, okay, cool. And then the next handler, there's no issue. So they can revert back. It just depends on how the training was done. It, it just depends on, did you really change the way the dog felt about it? Or did you just like get a dog to comply? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We can get a dog to comply. You know what I mean? So that's what it turns, that turns into. My dog does not like, uh, like, like, you know, dude, there's no obviously domestic violence in my house, but like, if we like fight, no, there isn't. Glad yeah. you cleared that up. Well, because I'm gonna, it's gonna sound that way. Like, but I, I have three oh boys, right? And like, there's constant fighting going on, like, but like fun fighting, not like they're not like, it's just boys being yeah. boys. And like, you know, dog hates it. Dog, like, like when we start yeah. running around each other, he, it, it yeah. makes him nuts. Yeah. And it's crazy, dude. Like, my oldest son hates the dog. I mean, he really? hates him. How old, is, yeah. how old is your oldest? Uh, nine and a half. Nine. He hates the dog. And they can't get him to, to think otherwise. But the dog, when they start running around, the dog starts getting involved. Mm -hmm. He always seems to go up and like he bites them. It's so funny. But like the dog's playing. Yeah, it's dog like doing a nip bite, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and he's like, and like, I can't stop laughing because I don't know why he only goes after my oldest. <laughs> just and every single time, he just, it doesn't matter who's fucking around, he goes yeah. right for him and goes right and like grabs him. And he's like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> that, that happens between couples a lot too. Like, you'll see that like, uh, oh, yeah, you've yeah, seen like couples like play fight and stuff like yeah. that. And the dog comes and like, hey, like, what's going on here? My, my he doesn't like anybody doing anything like yeah, that. Yeah, like don't move too too much. Like no wrestling, don't no owls, no touching yeah, he'll, each he'll other. Get <laughs> like, he'll get involved. He'll start nibbling. He'll start nipping at people. My wife, uh, my, it was actually my dog, which is crazy. She does the same thing, but like towards me. And I'm like, I've had you, like you're my dog. Like it was us, and then she came along. Like my wife can't even get in the pool. If she's around, she like goes and jumps in the water and grabs her wrist and tries to get it like back to the side. Like she's oh, like, really? don't get go, don't go in there. Like she thinks that she's responsible for her. Wow. Like it's crazy. Yeah, it's interesting dog psychology. <laughs> it's a, it's a, just a resource thing. It just comes down to that. It's a resource thing. Um, so how did you get into the business of this, dude? Like, like you just, you like the dogs, started <laughs> a social media page, where can they, hella canines, how many followers do you guys have? Uh, we're at 18.7, 18.7 K, yeah. Okay. So a decent, I, in my opinion, a decent amount, because a lot of dog trainers, are, it's like a, it's not like necessarily an industry where like you have to go to school and stuff. Like a lot of people realize they wake up one day and like, I could just become a dog trainer tomorrow just start posting on Facebook and little groups and people will just start trusting you with their dogs. And like, that's true. You know, like going back to like what you're saying about freelance and stuff, if you were just doing stuff at that kind of like operating at such a smaller level, then there's, I'm sure that you've changed someone's life. You've, you know, allowed someone to keep their dog. But, um, we had, I was in San Diego and people were just contacting me left and right. And at this point I wasn't even like, 
training. Like I was training dogs, I was training rescue dogs. Like I was just like working with our dogs. And so I started this rescue and I was like, I was like 22. I had no, no idea what I was doing. Um, but we had all these volunteers that would come out and help. They wanted to like work with dogs as well. So I would take all these guys and we'd go to like a park like once a week on a day that I don't have duty. So <laughs> we'd go to a park and uh, we would bring all these foster dogs out. They would go and pick up the dogs from the foster homes. We would go out to a park and we'd just do like group class and training. So the people would see us outside. They would come and ask for help. People would see our stuff on social media and like reach out for help and stuff like that. And I got so many people that came to me like looking to learn and stuff like that. And that's actually how I met my first, my very first apprentice. I mean, she's the one that lives out here in New Jersey. Um, she just motivated. She would drive all the way from Oceanside, like just to work with rescue dogs. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like, like, are you serious? And uh, she was just super motivated. And so once I started teaching her while I was in active duty, then that kind of just like everything blew up. Because even while I was gone, dogs are being trained. Um, we're still putting out content. But from there, everyone saw what we were doing. They thought it was like this cool, you know, thing that we did and they came out and yeah, I mean, it grew so from what's there. the business now? How do you guys make money? How do you like, what are the services offered? Stuff like that. So the biggest thing that we do is, um, I would say the number one thing that brings in money is pet dog training. And okay. I've tried to look, I, I mean, I've done the police dog, you know, stuff. I've done the, you know, DOD canine stuff. At the end of the day, the pet dog industry, and even like, I would say even some part of the sport dog industry, because we have some like rare occurrences where like, I'll have like a client who's like, Hey, I want to get like a PDC, which is like an entry level, uh, title for PSA for mm -hmm. a dog. It's like, yeah, hey, I want to get my PDC, uh, PDC on this dog. I'll give you like 35 a month, to, like train the dog. You know what I mean? $35, $3,500 a month. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. So like people actually do that. And then sometimes, but also you have breeders, right? You get these breeders who are like these older women who like, they, you know, they make their money off of breeding dogs, but like they can't train these dogs anymore. So then mm -hmm. they'll send you like, hey, you know, I'll give you this dog. Can you train this dog and get them up to this point? I'll pay you this much and stuff like that. Um, so those are that and like pet dog training because pet dog training, like no matter like it's always there. I can't get away from it. I, don't, I hardly even need to market or advertise for it. Like I do all of my Google ads and, and I do all that if stuff. The myself, product is good it, and you have results. There. Word of mouth is your best seller. Yeah, right? it's, it's just there. It's super easy and not just word of mouth because we also like we we're in a really good spot in Stafford. That's my best location. Like, we're right off the 610. So like people are constantly driving by swinging by like, hey, I need help. So like when you compare that to like what we could do in the police side or the military working dog side, it's just not even it's not it's nowhere close to being equivalent because a lot of like i have peers and stuff that spend more time doing the opposite so they came in like being like a prior cop or you know wanting to just jump straight into canine you know had a mentor that did it and start taking over the business i speak to these guys and like i'm asking them i'm like yeah like so like what are you doing like numbers wise like you know you don't have to tell them but give me a range what are you doing numbers wise and like all your police officers? if you're in serve training you know you got this many departments how, how much are you really making on it when i hear the numbers i'm like yeah, like I, I enjoy doing it. I think it's cool, but there's only so much I can allocate to that. Because at the end of the day, I, I got to make sure my guys are paid. If it was just me all day, but like I got to make sure my guys are making you know enough money. So, sure, so that's the problem. Like, um, a lot of times, like these, these I'm not. I wouldn't say like your big vendors because your big vendors are importing like twenty dogs a month, and I mean that's impressive. But like a lot of the like for me, I'm a very specialized type person too. So like I have a guy uh, on the West Coast who he does only like. If you, a department will come to him and it'll be like, hey, like we want a dog and they will wait for him because they know that he's a great trainer and he does like crazy good stuff. And so he ends up ha like taking the dog. He'll have the dog for like three months. And yeah, then when I hear the dog himself, yeah, select the dog, make sure the dog is good to go. And then like he'll train the dog the and dog then the dog is gone like three months later. And I hear like how much I'm like, dude, I could have trained like, you know how many pet dogs I could have like finished at that time. Like my trainers would have been knocking this stuff out already. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the Street Cop Podcast, do me a favor, just give us a rating and a review. We don't ask for anything else other than the review and it helps us tremendously. Dude, I know that uh, a friend of mine, now again, I'm not really, these are worlds that I, I, I'm not super familiar with, but I remember he got a dog. The dog as a puppy stayed with him for like a month and then the dog was being trained to be a hunting dog. Mm -hmm. Then he gave the dog off because like the idea was you would, Get the dog to know who you are, build a bond and relationship, then give the dog out. Yep. Have the dog get trained and then come back when the dog's like a year old. Yep. And the dog's like a perfectly trained, yep. amazing dog. I don't know what he paid it's for that. It's money. We do, it's like a raise, we call it our raise and train program. So like sometimes people will give us puppies and they're like, hey, like I want this dog at this, at two years old, I want my dog to be able to do all of these things. So like we take the dog for like three months, we'll train the dog to a certain point. And then when the dog goes back, we're doing virtual lessons if they're too far away because we have clients like all over. Or, we're doing in-person private lessons if they're close enough to one patient. And like, 
you're talking. What do you get for an in private per uh, lesson? And like, what we, you mean? Like, what do you charge? Like you a charge? one off? Yeah, like like you just said, like we'll maybe if they're near us, we'll go and do a in person private. So lesson. if if they are in a raisin train program, it's all like included with the package. Okay, so gotcha. it turns out to be like it depends on how people's like money situation are set up. But like we'll either do something where like okay, like this is an eighteen month program or this is a twenty four month program. This is how much it all costs. This is how we're going to charge. So some some situations happens so like one of my trainers will be taking the dog back and forth, but they'll still be getting paid for when the dog's not, working. and mm -hmm. that's how they can kind of like afford to even do this half of the. Time. But some people like can just outright just pay it, you know. Sometimes they pay it all up front. And we're talking somewhere between like on a smaller scale, we had one for like twenty five, but on a top scale, we have like sixty thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand dollars, yeah, to 60, up to sixty to train a fucking dog. To train a dog. <laughs> it's actually a deal, man. Because if you take that and you divide that up to what it turns out, like the guy, he you know, he's like, oh, get a PDC for my dog, and it's thirty five hundred dollars. Our board trains are four to five thousand dollars for four weeks. You know what I mean? So he's saying 35 a month, you know, I'm going to have this dog for, you know, a couple months to get this dog to a certain point. And I mean, we're doing protection stuff. Amazing. So now I need my decoys. I need to be able to have all this. I got to train in different environments. Yeah, yeah. I had I'm to just... travel up here to show his dog for a PDC. And like, it's actually pretty, like, it's kind of a weird situation for me because it's like not my dog and it's a client dog. And so like, I'm going on the field, like, you know, and everyone's doing their obedience to your protection. And like, this person's like, oh, I have my puppy since this long, and I'm coming out here with a client dog, and she got like the highest score in obedience. She got like a 63 out of 65. I was like, wow, <laughs> like you know, even I was impressed. I was like, this is a client. You'd imagine we'd be like pretty low on the scale. Because Why do people want their dogs being so obedient? That's a good question. <laughs> I think um, it, I think like it depends on, on the... I think it depends on what you're talking about. So this guy specifically, he's a uh, he's an Instagram influencer. Um, he's kind of like a let's call him like a Dave Ramsey type dude. And so like he talks money, he's like does podcasts stuff like that. And um he wanted he originally got this dog to be a personal protection dog. Mm -hmm. And when he bought the dog, um he came to us and he's like my dog's all like, you know, your personal personal protection, she's good to go. I just I travel a lot. I just want to make sure she gets up to the training. Is it personal protection? So <laughs> we can get into that. Yeah, I was going to so say. So he brought the dog and we're like, "All right, you know, before we take let's let's see the dog, let's evaluate the dog." So John um John, my buddy, he's the one that's out here. He he gets in the sales. Like, hey, like work this dog for me. Like, see, you know, see this person. Dog's supposed to be serious. Like, let's see, right? And so he just gets like two trash can lids, sits here in like a little suit. He's like, all right, send your dog. <laughs> and like, he sends his dog, and the dog like goes and picks up like the tub. Oh, and so really? he's like, he's like, okay, well maybe like maybe it's because I'm just like maybe she's not good at passive bites. So he runs at the dog like doing the cans, and she's just like shaking the tug in front of him. <laughs> like I'm like, yeah, dude, like I don't know, like if this is what yes, you're okay can. with, that's fine, but. Um, it turned out like the dog did a lot of like personal protection with like just like sleeves. So the dog never got a chance to like muzzle fighting or like, you know, actually do like fake arm stuff. Like dog, the guy bought dog, a dog didn't have a and didn't know what the fuck he was. She doing. wasn't serious. I'm saying like he bought so, a dog expecting one thing <laughs> yeah. and he got bamboozled. Yeah. So I hear a lot of these working, things. So I took her and I tried to work with to get her to that point. And unfortunately, sometimes you can just get to the point where like it's just not that dog. So like very good deterrence. I mean, a protection is amazing when it comes to like sports stuff. But if you take a suit off and throw a ball, like you broke in her house and threw a ball at her, like you're good. You can get in the fridge. You can, you can take <laughs> yeah. the TV. Like you got everything. Right, so, right, right. So um, I felt bad for him. It's like, hey, man, this is kind of what you got. When he's like, well, you know, I spent all this money on her. I don't want to just like, you know, I don't want it to be a waste. So he's like, hey, like I want to kind of like get some. He's a money guy. You know what I mean? I want to kind of get my money back on. I spent $20,000 for this dog. For the dog. Yeah. He's just, he's and now he's spending more money with me. So. I was like, well, like, let's do this, you know. He's like, all right, cool. So, like, if I go and I and she gets tired on PSA, then she'll have a, you know, this dog is proven now, and now like I can breed her and I can make money off of that. Like, yeah, you can do that. And he's like, all right, cool. Like, let's, let's do that because he also wants another dog to a more serious dog. So he's gonna try to procure a puppy. Yeah, out of the litter. Yeah, but it's it's actually kind of strange because he's, he's always kind of like back and forth. He travels so much. I mean, like, and so going back to your question, like, why do people want their just dogs? Get a fucking pistol. <laughs> right. you know <laughs> I mean? so some people like i will say this the only time i see like in it, it's actually kind of ironic because like as a dog who or as a trainer who trains dogs like for personal protection and sport and stuff like that i'm not really a big fan of personal protection dogs um because there's very few amount of dogs who can do what your dog does and then also turn around and be able to bite someone time too. so i think that what you have is perfectly fine you just need a dog who's big when if people that, walk in he barks and you get the job done and dude by the way like if somebody came in i began to struggle with them i promise you motherfuckers get involved yeah exactly like, like he's gonna tear that motherfucker up and how much does that cost you to train him for that nothing exactly 
So like he shits on the rug like every month. I don't know why he does it. But the problem is that you have a lot of why people. Why do that? Why does he shit on the rug every month? <laughs> what the fuck is with this guy? We got this schedule an eval, man. I don't know. Yeah, no, we're good. <laughs> bro, I'm on a budget, bro. I can't afford you. You fucking kidding me? But like, uh, you work for go... t-shirts. <laughs> so people will, uh, they'll go and get like these we'll Malinois. Schedule an eval. <laughs> no, you won't. I'll be scheduling a fucking euthanization before we schedule your fucking eval. So people go and get these malinois and they're like they wanted to have this personal protection dog. And I think it's it turns out to just be like an, an ego thing for like Instagram and stuff like that. Because like I'll tell you, like if you have a malinois, like you have like a real malinois, like you spend some good money for it, like these dogs are the worst personal protection dogs. Like, I'm sorry, like anyone can good quote me on dog, that bad personal protection dog. Awful. Because like again, this dog needs to be able to just like most I mean, when you get like a super high drive Malinois, they want to do something all the time. Like if we had a like if I thought about bringing a dog, I was like, I have right? my dog in here. She'd just be staring at you the whole time. Just like, what are we doing? Like we doing obedience. We doing protection. Like, we're, like, like she can't not relax. And it gives me anxiety. You know what I mean? Like, why are you just sitting there staring at me? Like, this can you just, just lay down? Yeah. He's probably like laid on the side. Like if he could talk, he'd probably sound like this. Whoa, what's going on? And then like when something pops off, he's like, let's go. I'm in. Right. But that's about it. Yeah. So right. it's harder, I think it's harder to find a personal protection dog than there is to find a police dog. It's harder to find a personal protection dog than there is to find like a pet dog that works in the house. Because it's a weird, tough well, in between. That's what I was looking into, dude. I did a lot of research before I popped on a breed. And that's what I like the most about him because, you know, there are times I'm not home and I just wanted to make sure there's a deterrent, but also like that this dude would also get involved. Yeah. If, if, if he had to get involved. So dude, like for me, I'm like, all right, we'll let the kids in the backyard. Yeah. Let him be out there too. If he's on guard, even if he catches attention, here's the scream, he's coming. Exactly. You know what I mean? And so no. I think, and so not only do you have present, you have like a really, you have a really like good deterrence. Like for me, when I was active duty, I was going a lot, you know? And so like I, sl I slept better at night, especially on the ship underway out in the desert, wherever it's going on, that my wife, like one, first thing that's going to happen is anyone gets anywhere near the property, right? So we have pretty decent sized land too. So anytime someone gets on the property, if it's like, like at night or at any suspicious hour for the dog, they're, they're, they're going off. Right, they're they're all going to be super loud. So she, she one knows about it, right? So she's got time to go and grab a gun if she needs to. Two, if someone gets in the house at that point, like there's a dog flying at them. You know what them. I mean? Six of them. So right? like that's just not that's not forced. Like no one wants to deal with that. So like the biggest thing is that like if you get to a house and you hear dogs barking, I I, I don't think most people like if the person walks in yeah, at that point, cop, that dude's on drugs. At that point, like, I, dude, I, I got, it's I, be I got fine. pinned on a uh, <laughs> I got pinned on a porch one time uh, by a uh, pit bull. And I had the pistol out. I had it tucked in back here. And that's the only room I had. Wait, no, no. That's I didn't shoot one. him. Yeah. But, dude, I was pinned. And, dude, fortunately, that dog's leash just got taught. Now, like, that's it. That's all that happened. And I was like, <laughs> the guy came, I'm like, get your fucking dog, dude. <laughs> right? Like, and he's like, oh, he's all right, all right. And I'm like, the dog was like, ho, 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 like chomping at me. <laughs> so, in my mind, as a cop, there's always a threat of getting bit by a dog because we go to so many houses. But I would always in my mind imagine i would do is just shove my fucking left arm into their face mm -hmm. let him bite it take the pistol fucking pop yeah. under the head the best thing is that if they have a call most dogs have collars on if they don't then i would give that a shot well that's yeah I, well dude like sometimes they don't but like if that was the case let them lock my my left yeah so, so I, I can get the pistol and fuck yeah the best thing to sacrifice is going to be the forearm and i mean that's it's all the, do, the best yeah. thing yeah like i don't think i could like i wouldn't want to have to go tussle with a fucking dog but i know dogs well enough I feel like I don't think a dog could kill me. You're a big dude, man. You yeah. got. Yeah. You, you want to try it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good, dude. <laughs> He's like, I'm, I'm done. I'm fine. Like, I don't want. Have to. you ever had to, like, as a cop, like, ever had to suit up for like a dog? My fucking canine friends are yeah. like, like, like my, my brother-in-law's a handler in Arizona. I'm going there in August, you know, because I got to teach out there. <laughs> he just got the dog, you know, like a few months ago. I know what he's gonna do. Like, up at the fucking sleep. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can hear right now. Want to do a bike, Rogan? <laughs> all he had biting me like mom bro put the fucking sleeve on uh i just don't have any interest i just want the dog to miss <laughs> yeah right you know right. what i mean like i'm a handsome son of a bitch i don't want to fuck that up <laughs> you know why, why tempt the gods uh I, you know listen dude i'm i think it's funny because handlers are always like they want their dogs to bite someone so bad yeah, like in like that everybody. situation you know i've been mean? asked a hundred times like, they're, they're just like hey you you ready? You want to see this? Yeah, you want to suit up? Hey, you want to suit up? I, I, I have tons of friends who ask me if I want to I will suit say up. the first time, like, I saw it, like, in person, like, watching, like, dogs just beat up on a dude, I'm like, why would anyone want to do that? <laughs> like, this dude's all on the ground, he's dirty, he's, like, in pain, he's sweating, I'm like, and he's in this gigantic suit, and I'm like, who wants to do that? <laughs> right? Yeah, why do you want And then I it? did it one time, and I was like, oh. Is it fun? It. It's so fun. Is it? Are, do you do, like, jujitsu at all? I can't do No? Mm -mm, okay. Like a bad knees. But it's like it's just imagine like jujitsu with a dog. Like you're rolling, you're sparring with him, and like 
It's That's cool. It's, it's fun, right? It's man. Goofing it's off. Just, you're not gonna get hurt. But you're teaching, like, you're teaching them do things by like being at sparring. You know what I mean? You're teaching them how to bite, how to counter, how to how to like wrap, how to handle pressure and stuff like that, right? Like, it's very, you know, we do like a negative, like a kind of a negative reinforcement thing. So like, I'm over you with a gun and I shoot. You know what I mean? I want you to push in and bite harder. And anytime you're you're stressed, I want you to just understand if you bite or you're. Mm-hmm. But we basically build these dogs up to like believe that no matter what happens, they're gonna win. It's you know what I mean? It's confident. So we show the dogs so many, I mean, buckets, I mean, we do a lot of leaf blowers. I mean, so many different things, flare guns, like everything to try to get this dog to be like, what was that? <laughs> and like run away. Well, they you say thing with horses, dude. I mean, we, I was on a CDU team like 20 years ago, so it's a civilian disturbance unit. And we used to have to train in our training barn with the horses. And dude, I mean, you think training is a pain in the ass. Put fucking 20 giant fucking animals behind you who are not happy that they're getting tennis balls and and shit and like nerf footballs thrown at their faces like dude <laughs> literally because they're trying to get them used to it you're in front of them in a line we have to make man gates right so essentially what the what the idea is you hold the line we've got the pr 24 the batons and everything out there and like we're all we're all you know suited up with the turtle ninja turtle stuff and then there's a command given and you guys got to make this like <laughs> fake gate to open up and these horses come prancing and boom boom a 20 of them right but Dude, I mean, they're hitting them with tennis <laughs> balls and, and like actual footballs and like just watching them. Like, dude, that's the point is to get them used to it so they don't freak out. And these things, you're like, oh shit, like, like stand your ground. I'm like, bro, this thing's gonna fucking trample Yeah, no, me. thank you. Horses are way too big. Like, I, I'm fascinated by them. Like, we used to have someone on our property for a little bit, to, like, foster them. They're way too big for me. Like, they're terrifying. I think they're cool, man. They're, I think they're cool to look at. Like, when uh, I would pull up to my, like, I would pull up to the ranch and I would like see them running around. I'm like, dude, that's, that's a beautiful sight. Like yeah, yeah. I get close to them, I'm like, oh, well, I was like horse town, dude. Do you really? Yeah, a lot of horses. My wife's like always trying to get me to go horseback riding, and I'm like, yeah, I can't. It's just so massive. Well, dude. Here, I, road like most professional. I don't understand how people train them. I mean, can you? How do you handle a beast that? Like, I mean, they're ma- they're huge. I mean, you see their muscles just like through their oh, skin. Huge, like dude. they like if they were. Allie has three of them. The girl over down here. She yeah, has, yeah, she has three, and she rode. Her, the whole family rides. Like they're like semi pro. You have like, to have a relationship with that animal. She got her really bad getting thrown off one time. I, I forgot what she said. She got, she got her ass whooped. Yeah, she's she's gotten thrown off quite a bit. <laughs> Bro, like I just see the Christopher Reeve story, dude. You know what I mean? Like you're coming, you're you're coming ten feet down on your ass. I see so many videos where dudes are just like kicked by horses, Oof. and they're just like like it sounds awful too, right? It's like two bricks just getting smashed together, and the dude's just like. Out. Done. Like, you're like toast, dude. They're not getting back up. You don't real, bro. Even a deer is a. Do you ever like grab a deer? Like I don't mean like a live one. Like as a cop, you'd have to pull dead deer off the roadway or shoot deer in the yeah. deer. They're fucking huge, dude. <laughs> like, they're massive, bro. Like like they're huge. You guys have like a, a bad f- ear too. Like they're everywhere here, here, dude. Like, yeah, loads. It's it's interesting. We they actually had like a um uh, a disease that spread oh. and knocked out like ninety five percent of deer population in New Jersey. Stop wow. seeing deer. Uh, I remember calling um, a family member of mine who's a hunter, and I'm like, yeah, have you ever seen this before? It's called like blue tongue or something like that. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, they'll come back. He's like, every 15 years or so, this shit happens. Mm. He's like, well, because he's like 50 something years old. He's like, they'll come back. And they're back. Yeah. But what happened was <laughs> they came back. There's no bullshit. I guess there was only so many left. So there's a lot of young deer, and they weren't smart. So you see a lot of fuck. Like, I think that when deer, this may sound fucking nuts. We're talking about crazy <laughs> shit. I think that they may, what kind of conversation is this? I imagine that animals must follow other animals. Yeah. And the instincts of others. So they didn't have instinct. So you see these fucking dumb little deer in the middle of the roads everywhere. They get fucking crushed. They're getting killed everywhere. But, you know, um, they're pretty resilient. I mean, you got to think about like how many times you drive down the road and you see like a dead deer on the side of the road. But like, there's always so many of them. I mean, we're hunting them in season. Like they're getting hit by cars on a daily basis. And they're just like, well, they spawn like crazy. Yeah. That's what it's it insane. Is. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, this was actually a fun conversation. I think it was a lot of cool shit. I think we got nothing accomplished except my entertainment. And uh, hopefully people found this entertainment entertaining as well. You know, I, I often think about why do people listen to this podcast? And then like sometimes I listen to other people's podcasts. I'm like, oh yeah, oh, ours is good. Why. Ours is pretty good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, everybody, like I hate to say it, it's back to the business, right? Yeah. Like why do people love this podcast? Yeah. Uh, because it's good. That's- you know, and why do people not listen? Like somebody recently was like, "Oh, my podcast is not doing good." I'm like, "Yeah, I listen to it. It's pretty bad." I'm like, what do you want me to tell you? Like, you, I, I want to be a pro wrestler. <laughs> Probably not be a pro wrestler. <laughs> so I can get, get a singlet. singlet I can go, go jump, jump off a turnbuckles, but it doesn't mean I'm ever going to be any good at it, right? So, I mean, I, this is not a humble brag or anything like that. But like, you know, 
outside of any let's just promote your fucking your if you want to train your dog where can where can they find Sherrod? uh so we're in stafford virginia um in virginia beach and south plainfield new jersey and we'll be opening up in colorado as well so those are our main locations you guys answer questions on like instagram and stuff like that we do yeah actually like I mean, I'm sure I haven't gotten to the level yet, but I can't actually I haven't got to the level yet to where I can put my social media on someone else. So I actually do a lot of it myself, too. Uh, I do. Believe it or not, I do a lot of it myself. Do you really? Well. OK. Yeah, yeah I, for, I know a lot of people do, but I can't imagine it because like I know the brand is centered around like me and who I am as a person. So like to give that to someone else kind of feels weird. Um, well, you can start getting strategic with that in the sense yeah, of like, like you can pre-record. Yeah. Especially if, if you have like other stuff. Come out. It's dude. As business evolves and grows, it's very, very. Every day I have to think uh, and figure shit out. Every single day I have to figure out what is my next best move. Yep. What should I be doing? And it, it, it's just, it's, it's very, very, very difficult. Um, I imagine it gets easy at some point when you get enough experience under your yeah. belt where it becomes very seamless. Like for me, talking to somebody who's brand new, like we had a girl on the podcast uh, last week. She is a cop who cooks. And she has a cool fucking Instagram page. I like her passion of her cooking is what struck me. And I was like, you need to come in and come on the podcast. I need to mentor you a little bit. What I can do for her is like what Trump could do for me in business, right? Like I literally can unfuck everything that she's That's doing, awesome. get her off and sail her away yeah. in her first two phases of business that'll carry her from now till the next three years flawlessly. She has all the fucking cheat codes now. Um, but for me, right, like I have to, as business progresses to another level, like my role has changed. What are the most important things for Dennis Benino to be doing? When I try to think that it's this thing and yeah. I stop doing the other thing, like then I realize the other thing is what I should be doing. Yeah. Then I try to find somebody to do this thing. And then, you know, how are we serving people? Uh, I'm doing less time in the field now because I have to build the business. Yep. You hear things, you're like, oh, maybe that, that, that's like something I can do. I, like, that counts towards what I'm doing. And then you try, you're like, oh, that didn't work for us. So it's, it's, it's daunting. Mm -hmm. And the, I guess every business has their own woes. But I, of course, I took on a business where it's political, which it shouldn't be, but it is. So on top of it being difficult enough, I have these psychopaths who are in some way think that they're resolving issues, yeah. but they actually hate the police uh, who have put me on their target board as yeah. well. And they're emotionally charged, right? So it's different than having a, uh, you know, some kind of horn locking of intelligence. Yeah. You have emotionally charged adversaries. Yeah, because now there's a block in communication. There's no communication, right? right? None. So you, emotions are very high, not on this end, but you can't, you can't communicate with that you person. You can't communicate with somebody who's, who's emotionally charged, yeah. who's, who's a lunatic. And, uh, you know, I don't know what got them there, but they're fucking nuts. So, like, there's no resolution when you're, when you're a reasonable person. So on top of that, like, it's, it gets very, and I think everybody has to deal with it. I actually feel for celebrities, dude, as much yeah, as this oh, sounds. Oh, yes. Like, dude, now having a little bit of a celebrity status in some sense in this niche market of people knowing who I am. Yeah. Um, it, I, this, this shouldn't dissuade people from saying hello to me because I really appreciate people do recognize and say hello to me and it means the world. And I, if I can, you know, take, I, like last night, somebody, I'm going to say this to my detriment, but somebody's wife reached out to me like a month ago. I was like, hey, Husband's a big fan of yours. Da, 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 da. It'd be cool if you could make him a video. And I was like, well, how about I make him a video and also call him on his birthday? Right. And he was pumped last night. That's like, awesome. my kids are next to me. Yeah. yeah. That, that, if that made his night, it took me three minutes to have a conversation. We laughed. We goofed off a little bit with jokes. Uh, it really was very satisfying for me as well. But like, it gets overwhelming at times. Like when we go to a police event and, and I'm only getting to experience that, like, seven times a year right i get the sporadic ones of like i'm out here like yeah. I'm at this place a couple people recognize me can i get a picture yeah 100 percent. then i go to police events that are like a thousand cops at yeah, and it's like, like lines of people like trying to get pictures and i'm like that's cool like it's cool now i can't imagine what's like all the time right could you imagine being like kanye west no who i i, I, I i'm I, i'll say this publicly i do listen to a lot of his music <laughs> I, I i i i am gonna say that I, I still right now yeah, <laughs> and me too. Yeah, yeah, I, I like <laughs> me I, too. <laughs> bro, I try to like put aside the position some of these people have taken, yeah, like politically and some. But Kanye's not somebody who is anti. I think. Uh, I, I think with artists, like they have the unique um, ability to be able to have you separate from them. You know what I mean? Like you can make music and 
you know, if you enjoy the music, it really I mean, sucks Christ, to say. Drake disses the police on his latest song with 21 Savage, and it's like... Do you still listen to it? Yeah, all the time. It's a good fucking song. <laughs> right? That's like, what I'm saying. And the, like, the, the what, lyrics what are you like... do? Got a, love, a lot of love from 12, but it's not reciprocal. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, how the, that's how the words go. And I'm like, come on, Drake, we like you. Like, but you're an honest person who could say that. I think that like some people behind like, oh, they still they still listen to it. I think they do. When you're yeah, when yeah, you're yeah. as big as Kanye, like you could say whatever you want, yeah, but they still yeah. listen to it. I, I promise you. You know, like people still listen no to it. No one's Drake. listening to R. Kelly. Bro, bro like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, bro. I believe I can fly is a beautiful song. Right? I can't do Bump it. and Grind. Like, no, no, I can't do it. You lost wait, me. Wait, no, R. Kelly's not Bump and Grind. That's uh that's uh <laughs> Is it Bump and Grind? No, it's uh, it's uh, Bobby Brown. It's Bobby Brown. Bobby, Bobby, I don't. Know. Is it R. Kelly? Okay, yes. Yeah, so it's probably right. closer to you though. He's probably closer to your age. So, <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> he wasn't on the radio for me a lot growing up. Yeah, so. no, it was like, dude, <laughs> like Space Jam came out when I was like fourteen. Yeah. So. So. Hey, are you saying I look old, man? No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> but um, I mean, dude, you know how many fucking cops like jam out to like, to like, Drake, NWA, and like yeah, fuck oh, the police? Yeah, like, yeah, dude, we sure. like, like we think it's hysterical. You know what I mean? Like. And I, dude, honestly, I flew back from Greece recently. I watched that, uh, the movie, the document, well, it wasn't a documentary, but the NWA documentary, okay. whatever the movie that Dr. Dre made, I don't okay. know what it's called. Compton. The straight like, out of Compton one? Straight out of okay, Compton. Yeah, yeah. I liked it. I actually haven't watched it. Not bad. <laughs> I don't think it's, I, I think it's just because it's like American history to me. Yeah. I'm a history buff, so I like to yeah. see the story yeah. of how like all these people came to fruition. Yeah. What Easy e did to them. Ice Cube's story. It's all very interesting yeah. to me, dude. And I can understand where they're, they're, um, I 100% understand both sides of why they hate the police and at the same side, why the police probably acted the way that they did because of one lack of communication, but certainly more responsibility. I think responsibility on both sides, but yeah, dude, cops weren't putting, like there was just knowing the status quo of training today and we're better than we were fucking when these kids grew up in the 70s and yeah. 80s. Well, I mean, you're also talking like L.A. too. I mean, cop, dude. Bro, like, yeah, no, like, you put, like, you put your of the cop. Like, bro, like, unfortunately, that's, that's what worked in some sense at the time. But again, that's what caused the division in the country. Yeah. So I understand both sides of it. Um, and, you know, I think it takes a real responsible person to sit down and say, we can understand why both sides of it. And how do we resolve it? Because we all have to work together. Yeah. It's like anything else, dude. Like, you, you know, why should there be disdain between anybody? If you, if, if you guys are, can be unemotional about it, why can't we just resolve it, come to a solution where everybody's happy with it? Which can be reasonable about yeah. it. And I think sometimes people fake the reasonableness. I think people will, will pretend they're going to be reasonable yeah. and have, have no intention of being reasonable at all. I think for like, especially for communities like that, it's just super deep rooted though. You know, like there's no, it's so deep rooted that just trying to convince them otherwise, it's part of like every fiber in their being. I will say that like growing up in Georgia was like, very different than when I got to San Diego. I, like, you had I no opened my accent, eyes. By the way, you have no fucking. Southern oh, accent. I had to, I had to get rid of it. <laughs> no shit. So when I first got to San Diego, like I know that like the person that talks like Georgia, like Georgia speaking. There we go. Um, just sounds like an idiot. <laughs> and I couldn't do it. And so when I went to boot camp, and uh, I was like around a, like when I was in boot camp, there's a bunch of dudes like from like Buffalo, New York, and stuff like that who spoke really clear. So I just tried my hardest to, like mimic that, but. Interesting. But anyways, and so in San Diego, like when I left Georgia, like, you know, I'm just going to say this, but in Georgia, like being gay was like, whoa, like it was a whole different, like, you know, if you're in school and you were gay, like you're a bully. And so like when I first got to my first command in San Diego, my LPO, my immediate supervisor was gay, openly gay. And everyone knew that he was gay. He was married to a, a, to a guy. And I was like, they're like, oh yeah, we're all going to go get like food, you know, dinner at his house tonight for the weekend or whatever. I'm like, wait, we are <laughs> like, wait, what do you mean? Like, did you guys know he's, you know? And so like, for me, I, um, I, and people in that situation, like, I don't mean to say that they're so deep rooted that they can't get out of it, but I was like really young. Like I was like 18 years old oh, yeah, when yeah, I was yeah. exposed to that. So I think I had enough time, but what, I was also separated from my environment. So you took me out of my environment and you right. put me in a new place right. and, and all the people that are around me, like, dude, this is normal. Like what's, what's wrong with you? Bro, and the coolest thing that had <laughs> real quick, the coolest yeah. thing that happens when I got there He's like, hey, this is Will, my husband. He's like, hey, man, don't do that. They're going to think we're gay or something. And like, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like, I'm confused now. Yeah, but like, yeah, the yeah. dude was like, it was like a normal dude. And honestly, yeah, yeah. coming from Georgia, like, I felt so stupid to not think that, like, these are normal people. I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. Anyway, dude, um, can we go over where they can find you already? <laughs> yeah. You have a website. You have a website out already? Yeah, we have a website, www.hellak9. Hey, dude, I appreciate it. I had a lot of fun today. And I got a three o'clock call. So it's, uh, guys, that was uh, Gerard Johnson.
Hey guys, follow us on all social media platforms to include Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook group. We have so much information going out every single day and we don't want you to miss out on any of that stuff. So check it out. Go give us a follow.